is Mujisola Florence Akinsonya. I was born in Atapaiko, a village very close to Abekuta in Ogun State, about 50 years ago. So by the time I was five, going to six years old, my mom wants me to go to a Nostrum primary school, which is a private um, school when it, is, it started booming in Ibado, or your state that time. So I was withdrawn from St. Stephen Primary School. So off I went with my immediate senior sister. We, I we were to Alafia Nostrum Primary School, Mokola Ibado. So I finished up in Alafia Nostrum Primary School. Then off I started my secondary school. And that was the regime of Bolaige in Ibado. I was admitted to um, guest grammar school with Okodo Ibado. When I was on my secondary education, I, I have to travel down to Abekuta to start um, the um, pre-degree classes in UNA. So that was how I entered University of um, Lagos, Abekuta campus. So I wanted to do pharmacy, that was my initial um, preference, but because there was no course like that in UNAM, so I have to settle in for home science and management. I don't want to do anything agriculture. My preference was to do pharmacy, but because there was no course like that, so I have to settle in for home science and management. Um, my personality is somebody that can switch from art to sciences, so it was so convenient for me to try well, making sure that um, I, I did well as home science and management, I, I subject matter in clothing and textile. So when I finished university, uh, I was posted to Kogi State for my youth service. And I was, uh, there was so many of such at that time um, between the northerners and the southerners. So I have to you know, be bold. I have to look at what do I really want? If I go to Kogi State, is there any textile company there? Because I actually want to make sure that I practice in a textile company. So I have to walk into the NYC office myself and you know, tender my uh, request that I really want to go to Lagos because there are many textile factory in Lagos. So they actually changed it for me. So that was how I was changed to Lagos State to do my service in Lagos State. And I, I believe that is a turning point in my life to, to, to ask and to, you know, to voice out what you really want, how, how you want to see yourself in the future. So I work with um, Half Prince Nigerian PLC in Solo. So I just look at, okay, what do I want to do next? So I went back to school to start my master's. And by the time I was doing my master's, I also look at what will sustain me as a student. I can't be going back home to ask for uh, pocket money or all that. So I have to pick up a teaching job in Akbata. So my first job was working with Akbata Memorial High School in Solo. I started a new career as a teacher again in Premier Academy, Lube, Abuja. So I worked in Lube for about one year. And after that one year, I was bored. There was nothing challenging about teaching again. And I remember going to Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Abuja. That was 2003. And where the Queen Elizabeth was coming to Nigeria. And I saw a poster in Cheraton Hotel, Abuja, that they needed three youths from the 36 states in Nigeria. And that was how I found myself in NGO work. And I went to that conference and the, the Queen um, promised that they are going to fund any youth NGO that are serious and ready to take the HIV intervention seriously. So that was how I came back to Abekuta. And we, with all my colleagues, three of my colleagues, one is late now. And, we started Common with Youth Organization. So, um, my career, what launched me into my career was, I remember when I was teaching in Apata Memorial High School in Solo, and many adolescent girls would come to me to confide in me about what they are going through in terms of uh, peer pressures, in terms of um, their first menstruation, in terms of how to negotiate when a boy, a child, you know, uh, toast them to be their lover and all that. So I believe that somebody must, you know, try to intervene and bridge that gap uh, where a dozen can confide in, in an adult 
that have the experience that can speak to them their language, they can understand and they can connect with. But I couldn't get it. I, I don't know there is a career that an, that NGO is a career. All I know back then is that NGO is a charity uh, process. So until I, I, I uh, was teaching in Abuja and I got that uh, opportunity to be at the Common Works Heads of Government meeting, Shogun 2003 and where the Queen of England charge every youth in Nigeria to go back to their various states and make sure that we fight HIV to finish. So that was how I connected with Commonwealth Youth Organization and we start various interventions. So I resigned from Abuja and came back to Abeokuta. And we were giving um, Global Fund Round 1 to intervene in all tertiary institutions in the Blue State. I remember in, up till now, Ogun still still have the highest tertiary institution in the whole country. So when you look at the uh, number of people that are positive at that time, Ogun State was between number two and number three in the 36 states of Nigeria. And because of the proximity to Lagos states, it was a big challenge. So I look at it that, okay, I think this is the call. This is where I'm supposed to be. And this is where I'm going to talk to girls. So we started the peer-to-peer group intervention in all tertiary institutions doing awareness, sensitization and HIV and AIDS, different intervention. And I had the opportunity to have UNAIDS, UNFPA, uh, UNTP, um, Action Aid, name it. Most international partners were in Ogun State to give us different types of skills to function well in the NGO world. But overall, everything about my career, I would say grief. You know, that grit and passion, perseverance, uh, self-discipline, uh, you know, connecting personal interests and, um, you know, my well-being, connecting my personal interests with my well-being, every other thing, you know, joined together makes me whole, makes me to find my purpose in life. And every day when I go to communities, especially in the grassroots, talking to them, mobilizing them about um, a type of movement, a type of intervention, be it malaria, be it HIV and AIDS, be it during an Ebola scotch, be it um, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we talk to the community, we mobilize community, the power to mobilize, the power to be advocacy, the power to make sure uh, somebody, you are giving somebody in the grass with that voice, makes me happy every day. You know, when you go to bed and you sit down and you reflect back about what have I done today, I launched my NGO, Women for Peace and Gender Equality Initiative, in 2013. That was after my 40th birthday, when I realized I'm no more a youth and there's so many noise that you cannot partake in, you know, doing intervention with youth when you are far from that age group. So you find it difficult to try well or to tell any youth what they're supposed to do or to tell them they can do this or that. That is one of the pitfalls of you know, our forming H, you know. So I have to start my own NGO, and I launched it in Lagos in January 7, 2013. And after the launch, I look at myself. What do I want to do? Where do I want to see myself? Then that thought came into my mind that I have to, you know, push forward. I have to look how to what, what can I do in the international scene? I'm bored with the local setting, the national setting, you know, I'm doing very well there. But what is there in the international setting? Let me see what I can do in terms of peace and gender, in terms of, you know, observing election to make sure that, uh, you know, there is um, peace after election. So I went to Ghana that January and um, I, I did the course on um, election observation. So after the course, it was a one month course in Ghana. I came back end of January. Then by March, I, I just saw an email from the center that um, if you are ready to go for a long term election observer in Malawi, uh, these are the terms. So I just said, okay, I'm ready to go and all that. And by April, I was shortlisted to be among the 10 picked from the countries in Africa. So I was the only Nigerian in the team. So I was able to exercise all the strengths and skills I can in Nigeria. And then I came out 
the best of me when I was in Malawi. I met a lot of people. Um, I remember it was um, the president of the ex-president of um, uh, Sierra Leone that led the mission. So I met a lot of diplomats in the course of my mission in Malawi. So I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. This is me, and this is what interested me. You know, talking as a diplomat, you know, working at international space, and you know, training you the terms used at a, as a diplomat. So it's sweeping my, it, you know, my situation, and I was able to to blend very well during that mission. When I came back to Nigeria, uh, in um, in uh, April, May, June, July, I came back in July. Then I was exposed to so many different um, courses abroad. I went to Canada, I went to US for some courses. I came back, I went for another mission in Mozambique that same year. Um, I was able to blend well in a, a Spanish speaking country. I used about three months there in Mozambique as well. When I came back, after using about two months again, I was off to Egypt. From Egypt, I was off to uh, Mali. From Mali, Ethiopia, Ethiopia to Ghana, Ghana to Sierra Leone. And that was how it worked with African Union, uh, doing election missions. So after all those years, between 2013 to 2019, I've been able to travel to more than 12 African countries, doing one thing or the other in terms of peace missions, human rights mission. Um, I was also part of African Peace Support Standby Mission, where we do a lot of um, military drills as a civilian to know how we can engage during the peace processes. So coming back, I was also, you know, trained as a mediator, as um, people that can talk to rebels when they are on missions and different things in conflict-prone areas. So that was how I get my footing in the... But back home, as I, you know, go back and forth into mission, I didn't drop the idea of you know, making sure that my NGOs keep on running. And I keep on engaging in malaria interventions back home. I keep on engaging with policy advocacy, especially when we talk about um, making sure that uh, women have voices in the local setting in, at the national level. Um, today, I would say um, specifically that I was part of the civil society that make sure that we, we were able to draft and make sure they pass the anti-stigma and discrimination law in the states. I was also part of the team that was able to do violence against persons bills in the states. Uh, it's, it's a long journey and people will ask me, why are you so interested in policy? There is no money there. So I see myself as a policy entrepreneur. You may not get money when you are, do poli when you are doing policy intervention, but when it comes to your social capital, you are building it. In terms of making sure that I don't know anybody in high places. I don't have a father, you know, a godfather in politics. But when they see you talking the terms in terms of policy, I was able to work with the some of the first lady in Ogun State, first lady Amosu. I was a project manager for the World Bank projects she did. I was also um, presently, you know, partnering with um, Mrs. Bami Dili Abiodun, the present first lady of Ogun State, in terms of policy advocacy in terms of different interventions concerning women. So I would say I've built my social capital that are now giving me uh, a kind of, you know, a kind of uh, re return back to sources in terms of making sure you do what is right in the state. Uh, um, um, many people will look at me, ah, are you doing it? Um, most of the TV stations and FM stations in the state have been featured there to talk about uh, gender equality, to talk about sustainable development goals, to talk about different interventions that concerns social movement. So I would say I will continue to, you know, to do this. I will continue to move in this direction because um, I keep moving and, uh, with, um, you know, building with my gritty and perseverance nation, building solutions around challenges and bottlenecks, you know, when I see grit as talent times effort, which will now bring a skill. So I've built a, ty a type of skill in terms of to be able to open door, in terms of you know making sure I talk to duty bearers. I've paid advocacy visits, high level advocacy visits to 
different celebrities in Nigeria without even lobbying or knowing them somewhere. But over time, there is a way you can build your skills, and that has been taking me um, going in my career. Yes, um, my favorite game as a child, you know, Ten Ten, when you play Ten Ten and Suwe, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a, something like a Sudoku type of in this, uh, in this internet age. So that's my favorite. Then growing up, I pick um, the interest in Scrabble. So I still play Scrabble to, to today. Then my nickname, um, when I was young, some of my, the Yawos in the house called me Ibadiano. Um, some call me Awilono. <laughs> so those are my nickname when I was young. Mm, as a growing child, I don't like failure. You know, when I failed in school or in any competition, I feel very sad. And I always want to, you know, make, make it right. Um, I remember one day when I came back from school, instead of coming home, you know, we have a rule. Once you finish from school, you have to go straight to the house. So I follow some of my peers to Bodija Estate. In, that, in those days, Bodija is a high bro elite you know, settlement. So we now went there to go and pick fruits. You know the Halmod fruits. So I was there picking Halmod fruits. Uh, some of the estates, they have to release their dog, the Ossetian dog, to pursue us. So I was very, you know, I didn't even know the time has gone, so it's a double deal party for me. They will beat me at home. All the fruit I pick when I was running, the Australian dog have collected it from me. So, and I'm going back home very late, and I know I'm going to get a thorough beating of my life. So when I got home, I panicked. My mother and all my siblings were like, you know, singing for me, Jenko to Jegba. They started, you know, those, those stories when I remember now, I always, you know, look at, you know, how funny children are and what we take as a value those days. So, yeah, my father, um, Paola Jide Peter Akisoya, is a disciplinarian. And one thing about him is that he's endowed naturally with so many skills. He can do carpentry without learning it. He can do bricklaying. He can do painting. He can do so many skills. And most people will look at him and say, ah, jack of all trade, master of all. My dad can, you know, can look at any technical thing and do it within a second without learning it. I, I can repair my electric kettle without calling a technician. I started driving without learning it. I, I took so many things after him. To my mom, my mom is a seasoned trader and she has a nickname those days. They call her Money Woman. You know, she, she is so talented when it comes to doing business, when it comes to negotiation, when it comes to making sure that you have the logistics um, skill to make sure that your market gets the trader you know doing business making sure i know about my mother's business has influenced me a lot in terms of negotiation in terms of having confidence to talk in terms of um having skills from my father's traits i'll say i the boldness the 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 space to be able to talk as a woman i i, I took that from my my dad politics and I believe everybody should start um, to make sure that we have a conversation to to be involved in politics so that we can have a voice of our own. I'd love to meet Amina Mohamed. Uh, she works with um, the UN. She's, she's Deputy UN Secretary General and I love what she's doing at the international scene. I also want to meet um, M.O. Adudu, it's another icon in the Nigerian film industry. Uh, I love what she did 
and I love how she got to where she is today. Yes, when I traveled to Papua New Guinea, I had a stopover in Singapore and at the, at the airport. It was so beautiful. Even when I got into the town, it's one of the most, you know, the neatest environment I've ever seen. So it was the day I went to have an engagement with the uh, State Television. It's a live program which I've been doing for years. They call me every Wednesday to come and talk about anything, any discussion about gender. So this particular day, I wore a beautiful gown that I bought from US and sitting down, you know, conveniently in the studio. And after talking about gender equality, talking to men, talking about why it is dangerous for men to be beating their wives and why the wife battery issue is, you know, it's a problem in our society. And by the time they open out the lines for people to, you know, call in. So there was a male voice from the other end that said, okay, I want to talk that particular girl sitting down talking about gender that we should not be beating our wife. Look at what you are wearing. Can you, you yourself, can you be talking to my wife? You don't even have any decorum to be talking on TV about not beating. I will beat my wife 100 times again. So it was a little bit embarrassing to us, a little bit funny, but you know, that is a reflection about our society and how, you know, how pressing that issue is. In my spare time, I love watch, watching movies, especially American movies. I love what, watching Nigeria movies too. The ones that are very good, I can learn a lesson there. The ones that sh you know, push for all our social movement. Ah, when some people, when I'm tired and somebody just asks me, are you at home? And when I want to rest and, you know, and I don't want that person to be offended or, you know, I'll just answer with that like, oh, I'm somewhere in, maybe in Abuja, somewhere far that she will, not to ask, she will not be able to ask me another question or give me a probing question. That's superwoman power to be like, to fly to Abuja and talk to all those politicians that, do you see what you are doing? This is what the citizen are seeing and this is what we are seeing. If we have that supernatural, you know, eagle, you know, fly like an eagle. I would love to do that, to talk to our leaders. Probably we can get the change we want. <sighs> I don't like to to engage somebody that doesn't get my story immediately. In other words, I, I love people that are smart. That if I can say A, B, C for you, you should be able to give me D, E, F at the same time. I want to have people skill. I don't have people's skill. Um, I don't know how to do it. I, I don't know how to pretend to do it. I love to have it, but it's not my making. The way I'm wired is just go straight to the point and straight to the you know engagement and talk and leave the scene. Ah, religion, it's after that science or common sense. Religion is number one. When you have it, with your grief, with your smartness, you can fly. You can, you know, the sky is your starting point when you believe in God. Ah, as an animal, I prefer to be a fish. I've learned about being your own friend and don't, don't put your all or your trust in people. I've learned about how to be compassionate and I've learned in life I've learned that if you want peace within you you have to create that space yourself family the show me resilience some will be my driver to the airport some will be my logistic during my falling over my housing facilities. Some will be my strength when I was in the U.S. to house me. Some will make sure that they send their prayers whenever I was I'm down during the mission. I want to appreciate all of them, all my siblings.
sola ala lu ni olore ni oluro lowo ni oruko ti mi ni oyusegun akiso yen um ati mo ji je obirin takun takun obirin ta ma ko lokun rin obirin to nse gugudu meji ya ya mefa um, what would I say? She's a caring person. She's very, very caring. She's an introvert and a prayer warrior. She's a wonderful person. She's nice, kind, and uh, she's hardworking. She's a good mentor to me. There's so much thing I learned and I know today that she's the one that helped me to know so many things. I want to describe Moji as an highly passionate person. Someone who believes in the cause and pursue it to success. Uh, she's a very diligent uh, lady. She's very focused and um, she's very intelligent and she's very uh, responsible. Um, I like how she gives her energy to work and how she has worked tirelessly for the growth of the non-profit sector, including the growth of women and children across the world. Thank you for all that you do, and thank you for standing at the forefront for the North Echo for state chapter. Thank you for fighting for stability. Thank you for sustaining stability and peace among women and children within the state. Thank you for all that you do for the less privileged, and thank you for giving out your heart in all that you do. I wish you more successes in life. I wish you good health. I wish you joy in the name of Jesus. She's transparent and she has so many skills. One of it that I admire is the advocacy, the advocacy skill. She engages in a lot of research, research work and documentation. I, gi I give it to her. I can only pray for her that uh, God should continue to sustain and protect her so that she will get more disciples, more women working with her, but also more understanding from men who might feel at some point threatened by the uh, passionate commitment of uh, Modi uh, Kesaya. To Modi I said, happy birthday and God bless you as you celebrate with the PWD, a sign of your commitment to humanity. You are blessed. She is very, very, very passionate about development. And uh, she will just want you to call white, white, and black, black. So she's a person that um, one can really trust. And uh, she's very, very energetic. wish you a resounding happy 50th birthday. birthday. Come here.